Hey everyone, welcome back, hopefully after that uh, kind of confusing task uh, 34 because I have trouble uh, reading numbers, uh, to another <laughs> wreath video on uh, tryhackme.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at task 35, personal PC website code analysis. So first we're going to go ahead and head into, uh, this is a one dash, uh, but we're going to be heading into this directory on our uh, attacker machine. Let me go ahead and clear this. We'll CD into 1-35, and there we go. So first, uh, the index feed, uh, .html file isn't promising. Let's take a quick look at what we've got. So we've got index.html. Uh, realistically, we need some PHP, which we identified as the web server's backend language in task 31. Let's look for PHP, uh, PHP files using find. So we can do that with find period, uh, specifying that we're gonna search recursively from the directory that we're currently in down uh, to a little bit lower. And we specify with the name that we want anything that's a PHP file. So we can go ahead and run that. <laughs> well, that was fast. Okay, so we're looking at the dot uh, resources uh, uh, index.php file. Only result that we get. If we're going to find a serious vulnerability, it's going to have to be here. So we can go ahead and we'll take a look at that using less uh, resources index.php. And hold on, we want this. All right, read through the file. What does Thomas have to phone Mrs. Walker about? Uh, Phone Mrs. Walker about the neighborhood watch meetings. So I'm, I'm imagining this is the neighborhood. Oh gosh, it's spelled the Scottish way. There we go. This appears to be a file upload point, so we might have an opportunity for a filter bypass here. Additionally, the to-do list, so we can see that right here. Uh, at the bottom of the page, not only gives us an insight into Thomas's upcoming schedule, but it also gives us an idea about the protections around the page itself. Aside from the filter, what protection method is likely to be in place to prevent people from accessing this page? So upgrade the filter on this page. Can't rely on basic auth for everything. So it looks like it's going to be basic auth. And then let's see here. One moment. All right. Let's turn our attention to the code itself now. Reading through the PHP code, it appears that there are two filters in place. So let's take a look. We're looking at the size option. All right, uh, reading through the PHP code. Okay, so we have two filters in place plus a simple check of the file already exists. Uh, these filters are rolled together into one block of PHP code, which we should be able to find. All right, let's see where it's at. Maybe I'm missing it. There we go, size right here. So we have size, get image size. Uh, we need to get the file size of itself. Uh, if so, we're checking to see if it already exists there. The first line of P, uh, the first line here uses a classic PHP technique to see if the file is an image. Uh, so we're checking with the file there. Uh, let's see. In short, images have their dimensions encoded into their XF data. The get image size. Uh, we can see that right there. Method returns these dimensions if the file uh, is genuinely an image or if the Boolean value uh, false if the file is on an image. So this is checking to see if we can actually get dimensions from the image itself. This is more difficult to bypass than other filters, but it's far from impossible to do. The second line is an if statement which checks two conditions. If either condition failed, as indicated by the or operator, and we can see that right here, the double bars, uh, then the script will redirect with a failure message. Uh, so we're seeing if, and then we have message equals fail with that redirect down there. The first condition may need to be broken down a little. So there are two functions in play here, in array and explode. Let's start with the innermost function and work the way out or work out the way. Uh, so we have explode here. The explode function is used to split a string at the specified character. Here it's being used to split the name of the file we uploaded at each period. Uh, so it looks like we're splitting it based on that file. From this, we can rightly assume that this is a file extension filter. As an example, if we were to upload a file called image.jpg, this function would return a list 
image and then JPEG. So we're returning them uh, in an array in that way. As a filter only really needs the file extension, it grabs the second item from the list. So with one, remembering that the list starts at zero, that can be abused pretty easily. This unfortunately leads to a big problem. What happens if there's more than one file extension? Let's say we upload something called image.jpg.php. The file name gets split into image, JPEG, and PHP, but only the JPEG as the second element of the list gets passed to the filter. So we can see that it's grabbing that one. Uh, because remember this as a list or an array, whatever this is, uh, starts at zero. So it goes zero and then one, two, and so on and so forth. Look at the outer function now and replacing the inner function with a placeholder of explode results. Uh, we can see in array explode results and then good EXTs. Uh, so this checks to see if the result returned by explode, uh, the explode method is not in an array called good extensions. Uh, in other words, this is a whitelist approach where only certain extensions will be accepted. The accepted extension list can be found in line five of the file. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we have line five. This is our good extensions up here. So we have JPEG or JPG, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. What extensions are accepted? So we have JPEG, uh, J, uh, PG, JPEG, uh, PNG, and then GIF. Between lines 5 and 15, uh, so we have this target function. Uh, we can uh, see that the file will get moved to an uploads directory with its original name, assuming it's past the two filters. In summary, we know how to find our uploaded files and that there are two file upload filters in play. Both filters are bypassable. We now, or we have ourselves a vulnerability now. So we can go ahead and mark that as completed. And that is going to do it for this task. I will see you guys next time when we cover task 36, exploiting the PC. But until then, happy hacking.